Welcome back to The Maths Guy. Now we are gonna look at working out how to add fractions with different denominators. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so we're working with these three questions today and the first thing I can notice is that we have now different denominators in our question. So a denominator, as we know now, is the number underneath the fraction. Our numerator is the number on the top. So as you can see in these questions, I have different denominators that I'm trying to add. I'm trying to add two thirds to four ninths, three tenths to five sixths, three eighths to two fourths. So let's jump into our understanding stage to find out the steps to solving this. So step one says find a common denominator. So we're gonna be looking at equivalent fractions. So if you haven't checked out my previous video on equivalent fractions or you don't have a good understanding of equivalent fractions, press pause on this video, go and check that out and then come back to this because equivalent fractions is something we're gonna really need to understand before we can move on with this. And then I need to rename the fraction into my new equivalent, add the numerators and simplify if needed. So let's see what that looks like. Question one says two thirds plus four ninths. So some of you straight away can look at my denominators and we can see a relationship here. And the relationship is that nine is in the three times table. So therefore I can use that knowledge to help me find an equivalent fraction. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this fraction here and I'm gonna try and turn it into a fraction with nine as a denominator. So how can I turn my three into a nine? Well therefore I'm gonna have to times by three turns my denominator into a nine. Good, that's a good step. But now if I've done that to my denominator, what do I now need to do to my numerator? That's right, well done. We need to times that by three also. As I say, if you don't fully understand why, go back to the equivalent fractions video to see that part. So two times three is six. So my equivalent fraction is six ninths. So now I can get rid of this fraction temporarily and simply add six ninths to four ninths. So let's do that. I'm gonna tidy it up and bring it down here. Now I can look back to the previous lesson of adding fractions with the same denominator, and I realize that I'm working in ninths, so therefore my answer will still be in ninths, and all I need to do is add my numerators. Six plus four is 10. Let's check my steps. I found the common denominator. I renamed the fraction. I added the numerators and it says now simplify if needed. So can I simplify this fraction? Well, this fraction is actually an improper fraction because we have a bigger numerator than we do denominator. So I can turn this into a mixed number by dividing my 10 by nine, and that's gonna give me one and one ninth. Therefore, that is in its simplest form. Great, let's keep our understanding going here and look at this in a bar model. So originally my question said two thirds plus four ninths. So I could have done this. I could have said one, two thirds, add one, two, three, four ninths. But then you can see that this is really difficult to add up because I'm working with different volumes and different quantities of my fraction. This is in thirds and this is in ninths. It's very hard to add a third to a ninth. So what we did is we found an equivalent fraction, the six ninths, and now it's much easier to see that when we're adding these together, we are simply adding the same quantity, the ninth, every time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, leaving me a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ninths or one and one ninth. Great, so the answer to question one is one and one ninth. Excellent, let's have a look at question two. Three tenths add five sixths. Now this question's a little harder because we can't see a direct relationship between our two denominators. 10 is not in the six times table and six is not in the 10 times table. So we need another method now to help us find an equivalent fraction. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick. And if you saw my equivalent fraction video, you'll already know this trick, which is great. But if not, then here it is for you. Now, what we can do is we could just simply try and find a common multiple. And what I could do is do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and say, let's say 60. And then I'd have to do six, 12, 18. And I'm looking for ones that match. 
No, none so far. 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60. Ah, look what I found. I have found a common multiple 60. So now I can turn my two fractions into a fraction with 60 as a denominator. So I'm actually finding equivalents for both of these fractions now. But I want you to think about something. We've just had to do this whole process of finding the multiples and writing down all the multiplications of these two numbers, and we end up with 60. Well, watch this. If I just times my 10 times 6, what do I get? That's right, I get 60. So I didn't need to do this whole multiplication step. I can simply just multiply my two denominators together and I'm going to get a common multiple because 10 times 6 is always going to be a number that's in both the 10 times table and the 6 times table. So 10 times 6 is 60. So I now have my denominator of 60. And the question I'm now going to ask myself is, how did I get from 10 to 60? What do I need to do to get from 10 to 60? 10 times something equals 60. Well, 10 times 6 equals 60. Therefore, whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top, and 3 times 6 is 18. Now I can look at the other side, and I can say, right, how did I get from 6 to 60? 6 times something equals 60. Well, 6 times 10 equals 60. Therefore, 5 also must be multiplied by 10, and it becomes 50 sixtieths. Now I'm at a point where I can start to answer this. And the question now says 18 sixtieth plus 50 sixtieths. And I know that I'm working in sixtieths, so my answer is going to be sixtieths. And 18 plus 58 is 68. But let's have a look at our steps. And again, I can see that I found the common denominator. I renamed the fraction. I added the numerators, but I've not yet simplified if needed. So how can I simplify 68? Well, I can see straight away that we have a common multiple, and an easy common multiple to see is 2. So I can divide by 2, both of these, and 68 divided by 2 leaves me 34, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. But again, I can see that I can actually simplify this even further because I can still divide this by 2. 34 divided by 2 is 17 and 30 divided by 2 is 15. Now this is quite common when I'm adding up, as we can see already, to end up with an improper fraction, a fraction with a bigger numerator than denominator. That's why in a previous video we've learned how to convert from improper to mixed number. If you haven't done that, go check that out, because we're going to do this quite quickly now. So I've got 17 fifteenths, and I can divide my 17 by 15 and realize that I've got one whole, and then I've got two remainder, so it's fifteenths. 1 and 2 fifteenths. Can I simplify that even more? No, because the only common factors are 1. So my answer to this question is 1 and 2 fifteenths. Okay, let's use our new skills now for question 3, and let's do this super quickly. So I'm not going to bother working out the multiples. All I'm going to do is 8 times 4, and 8 times 4 is 32. So I've got my two new denominators, and now I need to just simply work out how I got from 4 to 32. 4 times something equals 32, and I now know that it's going to be 8. So I now need to do 2 times 8, which is 16. 1632 is my equivalent fraction to 2 quarters. On the other side, how did I get from 8 to 32? Well, I times it by 4, and therefore I now need to times my 3 by 4, and that equals 12. Beautiful. So I now have new fractions that I can add. So I have 12. 32s add 16 32s so, so 12 add 16 equals 28 and I was working in 32s so 28 32s can I simplify this fraction even more yes I think I can because I can divide it by 2 so I could go 14 sixteenths can I go even further yes to 7 eighths can I go even further? No, the only common factor would be 1. So my final answer is 7 eighths, a nice clean one. Okay, there we go, three questions successfully answered. Let's look back at our things to remember, our steps. 
First step is to find a common denominator. We're gonna use our equivalent fraction skills to do that. Then we're gonna rename the fraction. Then we're gonna add the numerators and then we're gonna simplify if needed, and if we're in an improper fraction, convert it to a mixed number using our new skills on that as well. So there we go, nice and simple. So I've got four questions for you now to work on. Put your answer in the comment section, I'm gonna do my best to answer every single one. So press pause on the video now, answer these questions, and I'll get back to you in a minute. Good luck. Okay guys, well done today. Hopefully this video was useful for you. If it was, please think about liking and subscribing the channel or check out our website www.themathsguide.com for even more content and resources. See you in another video guys. Peace out.